Welcome back to The Breakfast. Moving into a different conversation now, and this is coming um, up because of the stories in the news in the last few days, weeks, months, maybe even years. The latest one from Edo State is about the kidnap of the head of service, Anthony Okumbo, somewhere in uh, Orion, one local government area. His uh, driver unfortunately lost his life while, while that uh, happened. Um, if you've also been following the news stories, about 84 we mentioned this morning, 84 students were kidnapped and rescued um, from, um, I think, in uh, Katsina State also. Uh, 400 you know, were kidnapped not long ago also, have been rescued also. 35 passengers were kidnapped. Um, along the Damaturu Meduguri Road. This this really has been what the news stories have been like in the last few weeks. And so this morning we've invited Dr. Onna Ehomo to join us and quickly you know, share his thoughts on this um, very, very disturbing new normal. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, since the Dapchi School Girls incident of 2018, it seems we've been on a downward spiral. Uh, could you paint us a picture of the magnitude of the situation, or rather, should we say the crisis that we are in when it comes to kidnapping, particularly for ransom? Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Dapchi. Now, um, we have a very complex uh, situation on our hands. And the way to go about it is to um, decompose it uh, so that we can visualize it uh, properly. Now, what do I mean by decompose? We have several actions going on here. We have the um, Boko Haram action going on in the Northeast. And that, is, uh, that has a life of its own. That uh, um, insurgency has a life of its own. That's the that thing you mentioned, T-Box, and so many other kidnappings, the UN uh, aid workers who were later executed, uh, the um, Khan chairman who was uh, kidnapped and also executed on Christmas Day, and so on and so forth. So that's uh, the Northeast. Now you have the Northwest. Industry. The one uh, Mr. Osaudi mentioned in his uh, introductory remarks, where you had uh, the uh, 400, three, three, well, 344, or whatever number of um, kids that were kidnapped from um, that school in Kankara, G Triple S in Kankara. Yes. Now, those ones, thankfully to God, they were released a week later. So, that is uh, all part of that Northwest banditry problem where uh, so very many people have been kidnapped over so many years, uh, at least the last three or four years, around Rugu Forest, uh, which uh, about um, Zamfara, Katsina, uh, Niger, and Kaduna State. And that's where you have another problem in southern Kaduna, with all that uh, internet sign uh, warfare going on in southern Kaduna. Now, when you come down a little lower to the middle belt, you have... Um, uh, well, a header militia crisis, which flows all the way down to the south-south region, including uh, uh, those states, and then uh, the southeast also. So, you see, we have, uh, of course, southwest. If you remember, there's been, in fact, the former secretary to uh, government, uh, Mr. Lufala, was kidnapped on his farm by header militia. So, so we are in a crisis. That's, that's basically what you're saying. We are in deep crisis. Um, before, yes. before we talk about the solution, let's look at an aspect of the conversation uh, that has propped up in recent days. And that seems to be the target um, at the education of young children. Is there something we're missing in this particular aspect? Because Otago mentioned the, the, the students that were kidnapped and released. We were just talking about the Kankara boys days ago. And yes. then we have the Dapchi and the um, uh, Chibok and the other students. Um, I, I do know that in Kaduna, uh, sometime in August, uh, at least seven students and a female teacher were abducted. Um, is there something we're missing here? Okay, um, I didn't hear your entire question correctly, but I think I, I tended to hear you say you, you wanted the solution. No, no, no. My, 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 I'm, solution I'm talking about, um, I said before we get to the solution, let's look at the okay. aspect where it seems that our 
uh, young children who are in school, uh, education basically for the young is being targeted because with this kidnap, yeah. their education is disrupted. I'm asking yeah. you, is there something that we are missing that this uh, kidnapping seems to be targeting the very young in this country? Uh, well, yes, for very many obvious reasons. For example, back in 2012, um, Shekau said um, that uh, school kids were now fair play, that he would kidnap them. And he had been kidnapping and killing school kids until he did the big one. That's, uh, he did the, um, the uh, uh, Chibok one on uh, April 14, 2014. And that's when uh, people started talking about uh, kidnapping of uh, school kids. Now, kidnapping of school kids has been going on in the Northwest for quite a while now. It's only this Kankara incident with uh, over 400 kids that has, uh, you know, made it prominent. Well, certainly uh, the action in that too was also Boko Haram. So what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that the, the, this thing has been going on and you have to understand where the conflict or the, or the incident is located so that you know the origin, because the origin, the origin will tell you what the solution might be. Because the solution to the insurgency in the North is, is not the same as the solution to the um, terrorism in the Northwest or, or the heavy militia crisis in the Middle Belt and down to the South. So they all have different cases. All right, so go, go ahead. Let, so, let's quickly so, get into the origin, like you've mentioned, um, as quickly as possible. Where is this all coming from? Where is it starting from? Um, where is the route that we need to target? Uh, well, thank you. I think, uh, first of all, the fact that um, we, we have the problems of uh, insurgency that have grown, um, Boko Haramism, we have uh, the porous borders that have allowed the um, uh, you know terrorists from uh, the West Africa, the Sahel region, through into Nigeria, and they are now governing the ungoverned spaces in the country. You know uh, that's uh, part of that problem here. And then of course the problems of poverty, poor governance, and some uh, you know all those same problems. You know that's how those things came about. And so. The problem now is how do we protect the school children? Let's focus on the school children that you've uh, talked about. So we require um, school security measures. It must be targeted. Uh, we require risk assessment of schools. For example, look at the situation in Kankara. That was uh, those people who were just sitting up waiting to be blocked by the bad guys. Now, if you are in Katsina State, you know that you are at risk all over that state. And so for them to leave that school in that isolated area and they're waiting for those things to be picked up was just like inviting trouble. Dr. So, Dr. Uh, Homo, and yes, uh, apologies for, for uh, cutting you off there. Um, we, we might, you know, start, you know, a conversation about protecting our schools better. Uh, we might get into a conversation about maybe placing armed security, you know, in schools. But let's not forget that, you know, we are in a country where army barracks and, and um, army uh, settlements are attacked, um, are raided. Yeah. We've had stories of, you know, these bandits or these Boko Haram insurgents invading army territories and killing our soldiers. And so, you know, a few policemen or a few um, security agents in, the front, in front of a school may not be the answer to securing our, our children. The question truly is about the breakdown of security in Nigeria that leads to a place where kidnapping can happen just like buying airtime on the roadside, where 35 passengers can be kidnapped along the Damaturu Meiduguri Road and nothing is done to protect them or to save those people. You know, they eventually would find their way out, hopefully. It, it's, it's now business. It feels like every kidnapped gang in the country now has sprung up and is now business for all. There is right. a challenge with regard to security. The Kankara boys, for example, taking all the way to Zamfara. They were not invincible from Katsina till the place where they were eventually rescued. 
they traveled through roads and they got to their destination without being stopped, without anybody, uh, you know, um, um, accosting them. So there is a, an obvious, complete breakdown of security in the country. I, I don't know if you agree with that. And I want you to speak on how urgent it is that we need to start fixing that. Thank you very much, Mr. Saudi. Yes, uh, I agree with you that uh, a lot of vulnerabilities are all over the place. Um, the highways are unsafe. Uh, the school compounds are unsafe. Um, the, I mean, everywhere is unsafe. They even go into homes to snatch people. Um, most of the, uh, well, a lot of villages and communities in the northwest, in uh, Katsina and Zamfara State, they become ghost towns because of the uh, fear of kidnappers. Uh, food prices are higher now in Lagos and everywhere because farmers in the uh, northwest cannot have their crops uh, for fear of kidnappers. So you are right. We have a very big uh, national problem on our hands. I think uh, it uh, behooves those people with like to who like uh, National Security Advisor, Inspector General of Police and so on, to correctly assess or uh, analyze these problems so that they can come up with the solutions. But you know, what I'm trying to do here is say, let us not overwhelm ourselves with the enormity of the problem. We have strengths of our own. We are all soft targets, you and I both. We are all soft targets, but we have strengths. If we have knowledge, if we have awareness, and if we have a little bit of security education, we can protect ourselves. Yes, you are right. They attack, attack super camps, the overall military bases, but those ones have a different threat profile. And those are hardened targets anyway. But some targets have their own strength. And that's the point I'm making this morning, sir. All right. Uh, Mr. Ona Nkomu, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much, Mr. Felicity. Have a good day. It's too much attached to this conversation that, um, that you, I don't know, it's tiring, to be honest. It's really, really draining. Um, the part where we also need to talk about the um, denial of um, ransom paid uh, for the rescue of these persons. Deny all you want. We know that ransom is being paid almost on a daily basis. And even when the ransom is paid, and these it, people it, get it, killed. And it might be the reason why it's now becoming big business. Because if... Private citizens pay ransom. It's always been a ransom, business. You remember um, Evans, the yes. guy that yes. it was his profession to kidnap people for ransom. And now it's spread across the country. And uh, we, we don't seem, it doesn't seem like a lot is being done to address it. All we get are the media briefs quite all right. But we, we need to begin to take our own security um, as serious as possible. Don't put yourself at risk because at the end of the day, you're on your own. That's basically what it seems like um, at the moment, that if you um, put yourself in a compromising situation, there are no guarantees that um, security agencies will come rescue you. So uh, you know what to do. Sadly. I guess we will take a break now. When we come back, we'll be wrapping things up with what's trending on social media with our social media manager, Buki November. Just stay with us.